Pan-African greetings, sisters and brothers. This is Milton Alimadi, publisher of Black Star News, adjunct professor of African history at John Jay College here in New York City. Greetings to Pan-Africans all over the world. I want to devote my comments to sisters and brothers in Uganda. Often, it seems very dispiriting when you're fighting against a tyrannical regime, such as General Yoweri Museveni's in Uganda. You may despair sometimes because you think nothing will be achieved. I want to urge you, do not despair. When you're fighting a good fight, a just cause, there is no opportunity to despair because at the end of the day, know that you will prevail. Justice at the end of the day always prevails over evil and tyranny. It took South Africans 46 years to defeat apartheid in South Africa, but ultimately they achieved that goal. We will also defeat General Yoweri Museveni's dictatorship, his apartheid ethno-bigotry regime in Uganda, where all the top political and military senior positions are occupied by people from his village. What is ongoing in Uganda right now, as I speak, is the campaign of terror, kidnapping, torturing, and murdering Ugandans. We've been agitating, we've been protesting, we've been publicizing in Uganda and outside here in diaspora. I'm happy to see that the incidents, the vicious kidnapping campaigns have now been covered by almost all major media, including the New York Times, the Washington Post, Al Jazeera, the BBC. So we are accomplishing. Do not ever despair. And the proof is also in the statement released by the U.S. Secretary of State, Antony Blinken, on April the 16th. It's a short statement. I'm going to read through that statement very quickly, and then I'll make some additional comments and observations concerning the statement, the good parts of the statement, and the parts that need, still need some more work. So here's the statement. The government of Uganda's actions during the recent elections process undermine democracy and respect for human rights. Today, I am announcing visa restrictions on those believed to be responsible for or are complicit in undermining the democratic process in Uganda, including during the country's January 14 general elections and the campaign period that preceded it. Okay, so this is a critical statement. The sanction restrictions, the visa restrictions, who are the individuals that are going to be targeted? Because we know all these, we, we know where the source of all the orders, the orders to commit the kidnappings, the killings, the extrajudicial killings, the torture. We know that the order all comes from one individual, and that is the dictator in chief, General Yuwe Museveni. So we want the United States to live up to the words in these statements. It's going to be difficult how you rationalize placing sanctions on every other individual carrying out these orders that come from General Museveni. So that's my first observation. Let me continue. The government of Uganda's actions represent a continued downward trajectory for the country's democracy and respect for human rights as recognized and protected by Uganda's constitution. Opposition candidates were routinely harassed, arrested, and held illegally without charge. Ugandan security forces were responsible for the deaths and injuries of dozens of innocent bystanders and opposition supporters, as well as violence against journalists that occupied, that occurred before, during, and after the elections. Okay, dozens is incorrect, because we know that on November 18 alone, before the election itself, during the campaign period, more than 100 Ugandans were killed, the, even though the government itself admitted to 54 people killed. 
and that's the day when Bobby Wine was arrested and protests erupted spontaneously all over the country, the massacre of November 18. So I wanted to make that correction. Let me continue reading the statement. Civil society organizations and activists working to support electoral institutions and transparent election processes have been targeted with harassment, intimidation, arrest, deportation, and spurious legal charges and denial of bank account access. The government limited accreditation for international and local election observers and civil society, but those who were able to observe the process noted widespread irregularities before, during, and after the election, which have undermined its credibility. This electoral process was neither free nor fair. To me, this is the most important part of this statement by the U.S. Secretary of State. If an election is neither free nor fair, it means it was not an election. <laughs> and that is critical. And that's what we've been insisting all along. It should not be recognized as an election. And the guy wants to swear himself in as quote-unquote president on May the 12th. That swearing in should be boycotted. The United States, if it's serious about this statement, should not have a representative at that so-called swearing in of this illegitimate president. Because if an election is not free nor fair, it means it's an illegitimate election. And the person who claims to be the victor cannot be a legitimate president. So the person who's going to be swearing himself in on May 12 should not be recognized as the president of Uganda. In fact, the U.S. now seems to be agreeing with what we've been saying, Ugandans all along, that either there's a forensic audit to determine the outcome. And observers, Ugandans know that Bobby Wine won these elections, challenger Bobby Wine, Robert Kagulani, a.k.a. Bobby Wine. Absent that, there should be fresh elections, new elections, this time with observers, and this time the military, the army, should be confined in the barracks and let the candidates contest once again in open elections. Of course, this is something that the dictator will not dare do. <laughs> you know, he's already been humiliated and defeated, and he will not allow it to be observed by international observers and the world as he's defeated decisively a second time. But that is what needs to be happening. Because once you say this electoral process was neither free nor fair, how can you then continue working with the individual who claims that he won an election that is neither free nor fair? To me, this is the most critical part of the statement. And every Ugandan, keep reading this statement back to United States officials and United States government. Tweet this statement, share it on social media, talk about it on media, talk about it during the protests and demonstrations, and always remember that sentence. This electoral process was neither free nor fair, and insist on new elections, and this individual calling himself the president of Uganda, General Yuri Museveni, is not recognized. And we hope that the EU now follows through with a similar uh, type of sanctions against this regime. Ugandans are fighting their own fight in Uganda, but at the same time, it is very difficult when the dictator is provided financial and military assistance by the United States and the EU. By removing that outside support, the playing field is pretty much more level. It's not level, but at least it becomes a bit more uh, favorable for Ugandans to remove this, this, this dictator. I'll read the rest of the statement, even though to me, this was the most critical part. But let me read the rest. Nevertheless, we continue to urge all parties to renounce violence and respect freedoms of expression, assembly, and movement. It is only one party <laughs> that has been exercising violence, and that is the dictatorship of Yoweri Museveni. And it's only one party which is not recognizing <laughs> and respecting the freedoms of expression, assembly, and movement. And once again, that is the party 
of dictator General Yoweri Museveni, the country's dictator for 35 years now. And the dictatorship must end, and it will end, because Ugandans are determined inside Uganda and outside Uganda to end this dictatorship. If democracy is good for the United States, for the EU, for Britain, it is surely good for Africans as well. It is surely good for Ugandans. The government of Uganda must significantly improve its record and hold accountable those responsible for flawed election conduct, violence, and intimidation. Okay, so now how is the same government which is committing the violence, intimidation, going to hold itself accountable, you see? And that is where the statement be becomes a little, a little funny, at least when you find parts like this. The United States claims it's standing with the people of Uganda. And we are going to ask you again and again to stick to the words, the content, the spirit, and the letter of this statement. Let me read the rest of it. The U.S. government will continue to evaluate additional actions against individuals complicit in undermining democracy and human rights in Uganda, as well as their immediate family members. And this is very important because Museveni has turned Uganda into a family dictatorship like a mafia regime, sort of like what you used to have in places like Haiti when we had the uh, Papa Doc Duvalier regime and his son, Baby Doc. It was a family junta of violence and corruption. That's what Museveni has turned Uganda into. Muhozi Kainerugaba, General Muhozi, is the commander of the Special Forces Command, which has been carrying out much of the torture, much of the kidnapping, and much of the killings. He is the commander, the son of General Yoweri Museveni. His name is General Muhozi Kanerugaba, and we hope to see him as well on the sanctions list. So let me just finish the rest of it. The U.S. government will continue to evaluate additional actions against individuals complicit in undermining democracy and human rights in Uganda, as well as their immediate family members. The United States also emphasizes that we strongly support the Ugandan people. Strongly support the Ugandan people. Well, the proof is in the foot pudding. Let's see what happens. If you support the Ugandan people, you cannot recognize the individual who is going to be claiming to swear himself in on May the 12th. Stand with Ugandans, boycott that so-called swearing in so we can have fresh elections in Uganda, monitored elections. If that is not to happen, then have the forensic uh, audit evaluation, and Ugandans will then find out who won those elections, and Ugandans know the actual winner is Bobby Wine. And now let me read the final sentences. United States also emphasizes strongly support the Ugandan people, and we remain committed to working together to advance democracy and mutual prosperity for both countries. Well, this is a development. It's better than anything that the United States has put out before. Um, Joe Biden, President Biden, has said that democracy and human rights are going to be paramount, anchor his foreign policy. And the United States has been very insistent in Myanmar, formerly Burma, that the military junta there reverses and restores democratic governance. In Uganda, we also want to end Museveni's military junta and have either fresh, monitored, free and fair elections or a forensic audit of the elections of January 14. So sisters and brothers, let's continue. The pressure is now working. It's yielding some results, and we want more results. Ultimately, we want the removal of dictator General Museveni. Let me remind you one more time before I sign off. Please go to change.org and look for the petition, International Community. Don't recognize Museveni's rigged Uganda elections. Search under that name. The petition will come up. We now have about 7,700 signatures. We want to build to 10,000, ultimately to 20,000. And then I, together with Ugandans in diaspora and friends of Uganda, will go to Washington, D.C., will deliver these petitions, the signatures, to the White House and to President Joe Biden, as well as Secretary of State Antony Blinken. Thank you, sisters and brothers. Stay strong. Continue with the struggle until Uganda is liberated. Aluta continua.
Peace and blessings to you and your family.